The new Houston, spacious, clean, efficient, a fitting symbol for the new intercity concept. The great hall with its shops, restaurants and super loos sets the mood for what an ever increasing number of passengers know will be a smooth, comfortable, clean journey from city centre to city centre, faster than by aeroplane or car. The schedule is tight. The platform routine calm and methodical. The driver checks the state of his loco. Nothing can stop it leaving in 20 minutes time. Precisely 20 minutes time. The guard checks with the driver the makeup and tonnage of the train. Essential information for a man who will be using his power to the limit, tense and eager as he is, to beat the clock to the Midlands or the North. Little hope for the passenger running to catch a train already due to leave. Little hope in these split-second days of the modern brain train. The I'll see you again train. But whoops. Just a minute. Time must have stood still. Wouldn't it be fine if everything was always as nice as it is in some film commentaries? The driver forgot to check his automatic warning system. Bit of a nuisance, really, because the train won't budge until it's right. Won't be long now. Only a few seconds more. It's all very well people getting impatient, but when safety devices are built into a loco... Right, let's go. Two minutes late. One thing about this driver, he gets up to maximum speed and stays there as long as he's allowed. That's a help and one you don't always get. These modern speeds play havoc with badly stacked parcels, but it won't take him a minute to find the right ones when he wants them. Miles down the line, the signal's at red. Probably an electrical failure. Surprising how things go wrong if you don't maintain them thoroughly. Trust them once in a while and you've got trouble. Anyway, put out the cuckoo call and the lineman will do the job in a jiffy. Well, not quite in a jiffy. Oh, Lord, why do they have to interrupt at this moment? One thing at a time. Damn, a yellow. Just when we were making up a few seconds. He's decided to answer the call at last. Half a minute delay? 40 seconds?
Fred it is. Bet it's a line fault. Let's look nippy. That warning system business at Houston was a bit of a clangor, so let's get on with it now. Admittedly, he forgot to put the brake applicator in the shutdown position, but he's not the type to hang about before getting on the phone. fault it is and if he knows a thing or two it's going to take a few minutes time to do his sheets mm, look at those cars a 70 limit may be but they keep going That was a quick job, wasn't it? I wonder how long the signals have been at Green. 10 seconds, 20 seconds, half a minute. Well, it's a hell of a lot when added to the other delays. Two minutes at Euston, 40 seconds to answer that call, at least three minutes to clear the fault, and now another half minute. And we've hardly started the journey. Platform change. No reason why that should hold us up. Here is a platform alteration. The 0955 from Houston to the north will now depart from platform 8. Aha! Up and over and down the other side. Passengers not warned, the system never got the message. A bit of a run for them, and a bit more delay for us. Oh, come on, dear. The train is now over seven minutes late. With a bit of luck in the old days, he could have picked up a few minutes, but it's tricky now. They've taken out all the recovery time except what's allowed for planned temporary speed restrictions, and he's not had one of those. Sorting him out a bit, isn't he? No harm in that, if it puts some life into the platform work. Wrong barrow first. Makes life a bit hard, doesn't it? Having put everyone else to rights, he's in a mess himself now. 
By now, passengers are beginning to notice the inconvenience. Door. Door. Unfortunately, he'll not be bothered. All he's done is add another small delay to others he knows nothing about. By now, the train is seriously late. Ten and three quarter minutes. Enough to disturb passengers with their own tight schedules. They've read the glamorous advertisements and they've every right to expect to be at the church on time. Has she got time to buy a magazine? Why, certainly she has. This train is due to stop for four minutes, and for four minutes it will stop. After his parcel shambles, which worried him a bit, the guard is quite rightly sniffing out other causes of delay. This train is already late. Why is it hanging about? Looks more like a ruddy social club than a high-speed railway it claims to be. Now that's the way to do it. Wake them all up. Passengers too. A bit of a flourish works wonders. Try it yourself and see. By now, everyone, passengers and train crew, know they're well and truly late. The delay is almost 13 minutes, and there are connections to catch. No one can understand why they're so late. There have been no announcements about serious hold-ups, like derailments or power failures. It seems totally bewildering that a train should be so late for no good reason at all. The connecting train has been waiting for six minutes. The problem is whether to send it out or wait for the London train. It would certainly be useful if the area manager, who knows his traffic backwards, was down on the platform to make a decision. But he's got a meeting and is snowed under with paper. You can see his problem, though. If he doesn't get his paperwork done, he'll get a bullet from higher up. Equally, they will say that the platform staff is inefficient if they don't stick to the rules. So, they decide to stick to the rules and send the connecting train out, thus getting the worst of both worlds. Their passengers are delayed, and our passengers will miss their connection. In its turn, the connecting train will cause trouble, too. Those six minutes react all down the line. But what are you to do if the area manager is too busy to area manage? Well, you can't blame him for having a go at the first person he meets. He's missed his connection, and for why? Now, the pain train has been suffering all along from a slight disability which we hadn't mentioned, but both driver and guard knew about. Sloppy maintenance at the electric depot caused the loco to overcreate its vacuum, 24 inches instead of 21. But that'll be all right, because the guard put through a message from Houston to pull the brake cords as soon as the train got to crew. Message? Never heard of it. Thank you. 
C and W men should have been waiting on the platform. As it is, they've had to be called from some distance away. Nine minutes platform time for changing the locos. Four more minutes added because the message didn't get through. And all this could have been done while the passengers, parcels and locos were being changed. Actually, the train picked up a few minutes on its way to crew. It didn't miss the connection by much. Add the four minutes delay pulling the cords to the 13 minutes delay caused by accumulation of little things, stupid mistakes to be more accurate, that makes 17 minutes. Take away the three minutes picked up because the loco was in really good trim and we're 14 minutes late. Is there time or not? That freight train waiting on the loop. Yes, keep the traffic moving. Put it through. Plenty of time. He misjudged it beautifully. The freight goes through while the pain train waits. Now what? A speed restriction. But where? Oh, there. Best part of two miles away. They've not bothered to move the board with them as the work moved along. Now a driver is supposed to plan for speed restrictions. They're all down in the weekly notices. Still, he can't cope with this sort of thing. Now they move it. How many other trains must have wasted those extra minutes already today? We may be all right at this next station. Notoriously efficient, this one. Apart from the parcels, passengers can hardly see the train for parcels. Ah, a message. To area manager, issue special stop order 1330, hence Carnforth to take up. Somebody will be along in a tick. Special stop order. Why ever was it sent in the first place? Nothing like delaying two or three hundred passengers for the sake of two or three. This unnecessary message was sent late and received late. Another double hold up. And off goes the pain train, 18 and a half minutes late. And we wish we could say it's off, never to be on again. But if we don't watch it, there'll be plenty more to demonstrate in one way or another how to lose 18 and a half minutes for no good reason at all. I've been on the railway some 38 years and 
have spent most of it on the operating and commercial side so that I have been able to see the problems from various angles. As an area manager at a very busy station, there is, of course, an awful lot of paperwork, but this must not be allowed to take priority over our real objective of running trains punctually and safely. In these days of high-speed running, where there is very, very little recovery time, I would like to stress the importance of saving that odd 10 or 15 seconds on the various operations which, in total, will go so far towards achieving our object of punctual running. All the mistakes seen in the film I have made at some time or other and know how easily they occur. Delays of only a few seconds through failure to trim parcels properly, for instance, can delay a train considerably. It is a guard's job to keep station time down to a minimum. Delays small in themselves accumulate until it becomes impossible to stick to the very tight timetables of today. I started on the railway 33 years ago as an engine cleaner, graduating to a fireman, a driver and then an inspector. As the headquarters running inspector, I have played the part of the driver in this film, in which you have seen many deliberate mistakes made by me. They are only slight, but very time consuming, and they do take place from time to time. With the modern traction, and high line speeds, the margin for these mistakes becomes narrower and narrower. It does not take many of these mistakes to add up to a very serious delay, and this cannot be tolerated on a modern railway system. Now here's a shock. Averaged over a year, only about half our arrivals are on time. In other words, for every train you bring in on time, one arrives late. So there's nothing special about the pain train. There are plenty of them about. Let's replace them with trains that fit the timetable. Right time means right time. Not 18 and a half minutes late, not even five minutes late, but right time. If you take care of the seconds, the minutes will take care of themselves. <laughs> 